Hello, welcome. There's actually a much bigger crowd than I expected. Um, well, obviously you know who I am. I'm Nicolas Yanisopoulos. I'm the lead developer of Akiva Backup and uh, a gazillion other uh, components I have made for Joomla. And I'm here to present framework on framework. Well, first, let's see what framework on framework really is, or actually what framework on framework really is not. Um, FOF is not a fork of another framework, even though it was originally designed uh, as a means to replace it on my own software. Uh, FOF is not going to save your life, even though some people who have already used it for their products tell me that it saved them a lot of time. Uh, FOF is certainly not the best thing since sliced bread, but, well, it can help you earn your bread. And FOF is not a real framework. Actually, that was its original title, NARF. But then again, when I wrote NARF, I just remember those guys. I don't know if you're watching cartoons when you were kids or big kids. Uh, this is Pink in the Brain. Uh, so I thought, yeah, probably not uh, name it NARF. FOF will do fine. So what FOF is exactly? Uh, FOF is, um, I would call it a, an extension of the framework. It builds on the Joomla MVC classes in order to add some uh, features, uh, which in my opinion were missing in order to have a, a much faster extension development. Uh, it does not try to replace Joomla's MVC or undermine it. Um, and FOF is licensed under the GNU GPL version 3 or later. So if your project is GPL version 3 or later, you can use FOF. So now that we have this very generic idea of what FOF is really not, let's see what it is. What are the design goals of FOF? Well, for starters, uh, FOF was an attempt to have a dry code with Joomla. Don't repeat yourself. No need to copy and paste the same code over and over and over again, as I'm sure that you're doing with JController admin and JModel admin and JForm and uh, all those Joomla classes even with the core components. You know what I'm talking about, some of you, right? Yeah? Uh, so the ultimate goal is to write less code and let you f uh, focus on writing new features, not just reinventing the wheel all over again. Um, I'm trying to achieve that without actually imposing uh, a different way of thinking. You should continue to think the same way your still thinking uh, when you approach uh, Joomla development, not try to learn something from scratch so you don't really have to spend a gazillion of hours trying to learn a new framework in order to start writing a simple hello world pro uh, program. You should be productive from uh, the first two hours uh, you're in contact with FOF. And this is my major goal, be backwards compatible. I mean, most frameworks say that the next version of the framework is not going to have any kind of backwards compatibility. You just have to search and replace a few things. <laughs> times 10 projects, times 57 uh, occurrences in each project, and it quickly spirals out of control. And you have, when you have to refactor your code, you actually have to rewrite large blocks of your code introduce regressions and stuff like that. So, no, my goal is to have clear backwards compatibility and if I have to change something, there's going to be a migration path of at least one major version. So, uh, I know the slides are boring, uh, but you have to bear with me. The key features of um, FOF is that you should have convention over configuration, which means that instead of having to write huge pieces of uh, PHP code. Uh, if you just follow some coding conventions, uh, you don't even have to create the class files. It can do it all by itself, just like uh, Ruby on Rails does, just like some other projects which are inspired by Ruby on Rails but are afraid to say that do. Uh, you can use a query builder to build your SQL queries even on Joomla 1.5 because it makes managing your database interaction so much easier. You can have HMVC today, even on Joomla 
Actually, this is implemented since last September. You don't have to wait for three years and relearn how to write uh, Joomla software uh, with a new uh, API in the platform. You can do it today. Uh, you can very easily reuse view template files without uh, doing all those ugly direct includes which force you to use fixed paths. Don't do that. Uh, you can have uh, automatic uh, loading of uh, language files uh, so you don't have to remember to load the correct language file or to figure out what happens when, let's say, your German translator is one version behind and uh, your English translation, which is your base translation, has more language strings. So what really happens when a German user tries to use your software? He gets uh, some untranslated strings. It would be better if they were actually English, so at least he would know what the hell is going on and your other translator can catch up. Um, you can do media file overrides pretty much the same way you can do right now template overrides. Um, so, you know, template designers are always picking on developers and say, well, you guys are loading your CSS files and you're messing up with our templates because your CSS files are loading after hours. So, can you add a switch to disable your CSS files? Well, yes, you can actually override them. Uh, it's all baked in. And you can have automatic JSON and CSV views, which means that you can just focus on writing your software and you can automatically have export to Excel and a remote API so that JavaScript applications or other web applications can reuse your component. So, let's see the overview of a component, which is the, uh, the philosophy of FOF. Uh, first, you have a dispatcher, which is pretty much a new concept uh, for Joomla, I mean. Usually in Joomla, you have an entry point file, like, uh, let's say, foobar.php for comfoobar, which does all the setting up of the component, which is actually wrong, because this file acts as a dispatcher, so instead of emulating a dispatcher, we have a dispatcher class, which does all this uh, gritty work and starts uh, the internal routing of the component. Then we have uh, the controller, which uh, its sole uh, function is to get the data from the, from the data that the dispatcher passed him and move it, uh, send it to the model so that it sets the model state. The model then takes the uh, model state data, does all the heavy lifting, it uh, does all your business logic, and then updates its, uh, its model state. And the view only knows that there, um, there is a model existing. It fetches the, the updated model state and renders the view. So it's uh, pretty much the thin controller, fat model um, approach to MVC, which is pretty much what Joomla was supposed to support in the first place, but didn't quite make it. And there is also another strange beast, um, uh, which is there because I'm trying to follow Joomla's convention, which is the table. And the table is a little bit of controller, a little bit of model, uh, and a little bit of uh, uh, database interaction. Uh, I'm not trying to categorize it in any of this, it's just the table. So, how does convention over configuration works? I will start backwards, instead of starting with a controller, I will start with a model. Uh, Let's say that you have a component which is called um, foobar and you have a view which is called items. If you want um, to fetch data for that view, then your table is named, let's say, jos underscore uh, foobar underscore items. It's uh, the Joomla database table prefix, your component name and the view name in plural. The Auto increment ID for this table by convention is called uh, your component name, your view name in singular underscore ID. Uh, you also have uh, all the magic fields uh, that you already have in Joomla enabled, which defines if something is published or not. Created by, created on, modified by, modified on, locked by, locked on, and hits. And all of those fields are updated automatically except the enabled field. This is the only thing you have to manually update. So, uh, 
if you create a record, the created by and created on is automatically updated. If uh, someone edits a record which already exists, the modified by and modified on is automatically updated. So you don't have to actually do that in your code. And of course you can override all these uh, uh, magic names with your own if you want. What's the main uh, benefit of having convention over configuration in models is that uh, unless you want to customize what your model does with its data, you don't need a model. You don't have to create a model class, you don't have to create a model file, you need nothing. It will automatically create um, a model object for you on the fly based on this convention alone. Which brings us to the controllers. The controllers also follow some conventions and by design they're not restful. Uh, this was a conscious design choice uh, for personal reasons. If you don't like that, with a little bit of work you can make it restful. Um, you don't have to copy and paste code for the controllers. For example, if you want to change what happens uh, when the save method of a controller is called, um, then you can create a function which is called on before save. It will get past all the input data. You can do whatever you want and you can even return false, which means that the processing will stop right there. Or if you want to change what happens after a save action is called, you can have on after save, etc. Um, one uh, uh, major design feature of FOF is that all MVC objects, models, views, and controllers can be passed in uh, a, a configuration array, which can also include data. So you can uh, pretty much override uh, what is the information that uh, you see throughout your application. And this configuration array flows from dispatcher to controller to model and view. This is a very powerful feature and you can see it in action if you're using Akiba subscriptions because this is um, uh, pretty much the way that the validation view is currently working. So you can dissect it and see how the thing uh, uh, ticks. And, uh, the other thing is that uh, FOF is based on a convention of um, what is the, the case of um, how do you say that if it's something singular or plural? I don't know. Uh, if your view is singular or plural, and will actually try to figure out what your task is based on that. For example, if you're accessing uh, view equals items, it will try to show you all records, a list of all records. If you have um, uh, view equals item and ID equals something, then it will present you the edit view for this particular record. Uh, so you don't even have to put in the task in most circumstances. And we have a similar convention over configuration with, uh, with views. Uh, all views inherit from a master class which is called FOF view uh, and it specialized uh, descendant classes like FOF view HTML which is the default HTML rendering, uh, FOF view JSON for the JSON rendering, uh, FOF view CSV for the CSV re rendering and so on. Um, they also uh, base the way they work on, um, on the same uh, conventions that the models and the controllers work. So you don't even have to create a view class if you don't really want to customize anything. And if you want to customize something, you don't have to copy and paste code. You just have to customize a non-task method. For example, if you want to customize how the browse view will look like, you can customize the on-browse view, the, the on-browse method. And there you have it. This minimizes all the code that you will ever need, uh, need to write. Uh, one major difference between FOF and the classic way that Joomla works is that uh, all toolbar, ha toolbar handling is performed outside of the view class and inside a specialized toolbar object. Uh, by default, it will render the, uh, a default uh, title based on your component and view name uh, and some buttons based on uh, which task uh, FOF believes that you want it to, to use. For example, when you have a, a browse view, it will show you the new record, uh, uh, delete, uh, edit, and so on. 
And there are what I call magic toolbar methods, which are uh, which can be on view name, task name. For example, you can have on items browse, so you can specialize the toolbar when you visit your items view uh, with a browse task, or you can have on um, let's say on items to customize the toolbar for the items view, no matter which task you're using. Uh, this all leads to having eventually much less code in your component. HMVC. HMVC means that you can call a specific view and task of any component from within any other component or module. And with FOF this is very simple. You can have something like this code. I don't know if you guys on the back can see that. Uh, it's FOF dispatcher, get TMP instance, your component name, your view name, an optional array with um, any query string parameters that you would uh, pass, and then dispatch that. And this will automatically render, yeah. yeah uh, to, to, to call components that match make those uh, No, uh, well, it might work or it might not work because it is going to try to instantiate a dispatcher. If the other component does not have a dispatcher.php file, then FOF will create a default dispatcher. So if the other component doesn't follow FOF conventions, um, it might end up uh, rendering whatever. So you can't use it with com content, for example. But you can create a com content too, which basically has uh, some uh, base classes which tell FOF where to look for data. And you can use that as HMVC. Uh, the ultimate goal is to be able to, to reuse parts of your components in order to create a, a mass up page, which actually works. And inside the same component, you can reuse view templates. Uh, for instance, you might have a view which shows you which are the uh, the active subscriptions of a, of a user and you want to use that throughout your component. You can just load a view template. Typically in Joomla you could uh, use an include but include has a problem that if you're using a template override then the base path of the include is actually inside the template so if the view template you're trying to pull in doesn't exist in the template, you get a blank page if you, if you use a require once. Or if you use an include once, nothing loads. So how do we get over that? We have a new method in uh, FOFU which is called load any template. It works pretty much like load template in, uh, in Joomla, only you have this uh, a little strange uh, way to uh, express the path. In the beginning you can have site or admin to define where FOF should look for the view template. Then you have the component name slash view name slash uh, the view template. And you can omit any part of that except the, the last one. So if I said load any template form, it, uh, it would figure out that uh, I'm on the front end, so it's site. I'm uh, right now inside com foo bar, so it's com foo bar. And which view I am, item, so this is the template I'm going to load. And of course, this supports template overrides. And it's smart enough to understand that uh, if a template override doesn't exist, it will use your base uh, view template. If a template override exists, it will use the template override. And now we have language loading and overrides, which is the problem that I talked about uh, in the introduction. When you have uh, translators and they don't catch up fast enough with your uh, base translation, which is most likely English, then your users are going to see untranslated strings and you don't want that because they will not understand what's going on. So in my opinion, it's much better if you just pull in the English translation file and show them the string in English. So at least they can figure out that all oh, the translation is not really working, but hey, I can figure out what's going on here. It does that automatically. It will uh, simply first try to load the English translation files and then the translation files for the, la for the preferred language of the current user. Uh, it also supports 
language overwriting, um, even though this is already supported in uh, Joomla 2.5, we have the very nice uh, component to handle overrides. You can also do that manually with, uh, with FOF. You just create the language file, which is, um, let's say, an underscore gb dot com uh, foobar dot override dot any. And this will uh, take, these uh, language strings will take precedence over any language strings that you have defined in your baseline translation. <coughs> the other thing which is uh, very cool is media files overrides. Joomla since 1.5.0 has template overrides which allows you to override uh, view templates inside your, uh, your template, your theme. So the problem is it only works with few templates. You cannot actually override CSS files and JavaScript files so what gives is that uh, the way Joomla works, it will first load all the CSS and JavaScript from, uh, from the site's template, the theme, and then it will pull in all the um, CSS and JS files from your extension. And this creates a specificity hell, especially with CSS. If you're using um, exclamation mark important in any of your CSS rules, you have just screwed up your designer. He cannot practically uh, override your CSS unless he tries to create a rule which is more specific, which creates in turn other problems. So it would only make sense that we could override those CSS and JavaScript files and this is exactly what we're doing. You can go into your template file, create a media directory, create a subdirectory which is called Comfubar, and now these files will replace all the files which are in your main site's media Comfubar directory automatically. All you have to do as a developer is to load your CSS and JavaScript files from your view template files using uh, FOF template utils add CSS or add JS methods. And FOF will automatically figure out if there are template, if there are media file overrides and load them instead. And finally, the other feature, the major feature that we have in FOF is automatic JSON and CSV views. You just take the URL and tag and sign format equals JSON and you have your data in JSON format. Or you tag in and format equals CSV and you have your information in CSV format practical uses. For example, in Akiba subscriptions, I have, uh, I have this requirement. I need to be able to pull in all the latest subscri subscription information to an offline application which issues the invoices. Traditionally, I had to go into my database, find the records I wanted, dump them, import them in a local database, run a conversion script, run an import on my invoicing application, issue the invoices. It took me forever. With FOF, I just access the format equals station URL for my subscriptions using my username and password. I get a full list of the latest subscriptions in JSON format. It's automatically imported in my voicing application. Problem solved. It just takes me one click in five seconds instead of a gazillion clicks and uh, 35 minutes. So, yeah. What else uh, you can do? Well, it's JSON. You can pull it from JavaScript. You can pull it from another site. Uh, you can even pull it from a .NET application. You can do whatever. You can automatically export all your data. So now, and of course we have CSV, so you can uh, import all this data in uh, Excel, uh, uh, LibreOffice Calc, um, Apple Numbers, uh, Google Docs, spreadsheets, whatever you want. So you can do all the crazy uh, analytics uh, processing that uh, your heart desires without needing to code that in PHP, which sometimes is really, uh, let's say, inefficient for this kind of processing. So now you might wonder, where am I going to find all this FOF stuff? Well, uh, I have a short URL for you. It's akiba.info slash FOF. This is a, a wiki page, uh, which means that if you, it's on Assembler, you can create a free Assembler account, you can join the project as a watcher, 
and you can edit the wiki pages. You can enrich it with information. Right now it includes uh, all those bullet points I have in this uh, very boring presentation, which is so typical of mine. Yeah. I could put nice pictures, but then you'd be like, oh, he's talking about code and he's showing us pictures about the earth and stuff and what's that. Yeah. Uh, you will also find uh, the Git repository there, which you can check out. I even have instructions on how to, include, how to install FOF on the site and how to include that uh, in your project. Uh, there is uh, an installable package which is currently out of date. I'm going to create a new installable package for Joomla 2.5 on Tuesday when I'm back uh, at the office because the Wi-Fi here is, let's say, not very reliable. Um, so um, one very important thing you will find in, uh, in this page is a link to a demo component which is called Com2Do. Uh, which I'm going to show you right now because it really has no code. <laughs> of course, nothing shows. Okay. <laughs> Let me fix that. <laughs> All right. But nobody can see actually anything, which is good. Okay, so uh, here's my component. In the back end, I will tell you the top level files are access XML, which is Joomla, config XML, which is Joomla. I have a dispatcher. My dispatcher is one line. I'm actually telling it that uh, the default view is items, because normally the default view is called cPanel. We have the index.html file, which is Joomla requirement. Uh, we have to do PHP, which is Joomla's entry point file. All it does is make sure FOF is loaded and run the dispatcher. And we have our toolbar, which pretty much goes to the items browser and as a preferences button. So. This is all the code I need to, to set up the component. Usually, when you have an entry point file, it's like this big. As you can see, my comments are much more than the code I, I've written. So, here are my controllers. There are no controllers. I do have uh, some helper classes. It's just code I haven't pulled in FOF yet. It's Basically, a date formatter, which uh, formats the date uh, with pretty fancy coloring and stuff like that. It will tell you when your to-do item is, is due or overdue. And I have uh, this uh, selection box, which just renders two things, a Boolean list and a publish list. And I could probably use the HTML, but I was very lazy. And I had this code already written, so yeah. Here are my models. That's right, I have no models. I do have a SQL directory and all these subdirectories, which are uh, so kindly required by Joomla. And this is basically my code for this component. The SQL script to create the, uh, the database table. I will try to make it uh, bigger. Just bear with me. I believe you can see that now. So my component is called com to do So we have the, uh, the table to do items. So we know that this is for com to do and the view will be called items. My auto increment field is called to do underscore item underscore ID. It just follows the convention. Then I have title, which is going to be the title of my to-do item, slug. Okay, that's another magic field, actually. If you, don't, you, if you don't enter anything in the slug field, it will automatically uh, be generated from the title. 
we have a description, which is going to be some HTML text, so it's just a medium text field. Uh, we have the due date, and then we have all the magic fields enabled, ordering, created by, created on, modified by, modified on, locked by, locked on. And these are all going to be held automatically by FOF. So it's a pretty much simple table structure. Then we have our table classes. We don't need any. We just follow conventions. And then we have our views. We have two views. It's item, which is singular, and items, plural. We'll start, we'll start with the plural view, because this is um, where we're going to list all of our to-do items. I don't have a view class. I just have the TMPL directory. And this is the file I can't do without yet. <laughs> yet. I insist on that. It's default PHP, which is uh, typical Joomla, HTML, and PHP code to render a list and do pretty much nothing more than that. Um, yes, this is the only case where you still have to copy and paste some code. But uh, I'm not very happy with that, and I'm really going to change that. And on the singular view, which is called item, is our edit, uh, edit view. We don't have a view class because we don't need one. We just have the TMPL directory and form PHP, which is uh, typical Joomla, uh, PHP, and HTML to actually render the edit view. So as you can see, the back end is just the view the two view template files that we cannot live without because we have to tell Joomla how to render that stuff, and another three lines of code. And that's pretty much what we need to have a fully working uh, to-do items editor, which I will try to pull up. Don't freak out by an error message you're going to see. Uh, of course, I need to, to log in, right? I just haven't installed the component yet, that's why it's throwing the error. This is our default PHP file, which rendered our data. We can go to the editor. I'm going to change that from test item to job 12 and click on save and close. It sends here. I can unpublish something or I can publish it back. All of that without writing any code. So instead of creating a form component, a, a form in a form component, you can just create a table and two view files and you have a custom component. Is that cool? <laughs> so what happens with the front end? Let's go to the front end. What we have here, we have the entry point file, which is loading the dispatcher. But wait, there is no dispatcher, right? Actually, we don't need the dispatcher in the front end, because in the front end, we don't have a default view. Uh, we're just going to load the back-end dispatcher automatically. So you don't have to duplicate code. Then we have our controllers here. I do have a controller because before well, I have uh, one event. I just have to try to make it look bigger. Right. I only have an on before browse event, uh, which is simply uh, filtering the um, the ordering that you can have in the URL to be one of the allowed columns, because I don't want uh, to have my users be able to, um, let's say, sort or filter items by who created them. That would be uh, potentially a security issue because I don't want them to see who created uh, uh, 
uh, let's say, uh, uh, if an administrator created uh, some to-do item or stuff like that, and only show the enabled items. I don't want the front end to show the unpublished items. And this is what this little piece of code does. And actually, I want, to sh I want you to see this piece of code. It does this, get this model, which fetches the model object for uh, this view. It sets our filter order based on what we have uh, decided over here and sets the enabled filter to one. Uh, what's important is that we're actually chaining all these, uh, all these filters here. These are not real methods. FOF model doesn't have a method called filter order, but it has a state uh, variable which is called filter order. So you can use this convention. Instead of creating a huge array and putting that in the instantiation part of, uh, um, of your model object, you can just instantiate the model and uh, use this kind of, um, of chaining with uh, pseudo methods. And when you have like 13 or 15 filters that I have in, uh, uh, in the subscriptions component, yes, it will save you a lot of time. So let's see, models, we don't need any model. And views, yes, we can't get away with views. We can get away with not having view classes, but we still need the templates. So in the front end, I have a slightly different template which renders things uh, more in a front end way, in a more user friendly way. And the same thing for a single item view, in which case I'm not editing the item, I'm just displaying the details of an item, which is also a very typical uh, Joomla view template. So let's see that in the front end. The error messages are because I have not installed the component. It's just uh, my development environment. So here we have, we also have a search box, right? Have I written any code for search? No. Why should I? I mean, you always want to search by title, don't you? That's probably what you want in all your components. So why should I be such a dick and have you write the same code all over and over and over again with each and every one of your components? I don't want to punish you. I want to help you, so it's built in. Yep, that works. We can clear the search box, and everything is there. Then we can go to a single item, and as you can see, I'm not a designer. <laughs> that, that's as, as beautiful as it goes with my code. <laughs> and yeah, there you have it. It's a component. We basically wrote four view templates, uh, 12 lines for one controller, and three lines in the back end. And that's a functional to the component. So now I'm going to take your questions. Yeah. How do you have related tables? You have more than one table in a component. Uh, when you have more than one component in a table? Within, within one component. Okay. Yeah. You, you also have different views. So you're just following the same convention. You can have, for example, I, I could have com to do attachments to store my attachments. Uh, I don't know. I could have uh, uh, com to do trackers to uh, store a list of people who are tracking this. And then I could have a com to do users, which would define all the users who are following up on uh, to do items. Uh, one of the things that you will find on the resources page is uh, called Akiba Ticket System, com ATS, which is the ticket system I'm currently using on akibabackup.com. It's entirely written on FOF, and you will see how I'm using uh, the categories from, uh, from Joomla, com categories. I have a table which stores the tickets, a table which stores the posts, 
and you can see how they all bind together and work together to create a real world application. Com2Do is intentionally extremely simple and doesn't do much. I just wanted to show that it is possible to create a component without writing code. Yes? Uh, what case when <coughs> for items you need to store the data in two different tables. So items is items and items reference. In that case, is that possible? I really don't understand the question. Uh, you, 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 have, you have to, yeah, to repeat that. So the item data needs to be stored in two different tables. There is com2 items and com2 items extra. Uh, yes, you can. Uh, yes, the question uh, because the camera doesn't record your voice. Yes, uh, the question is uh, if it's possible to to have data essentially separated in two tables and do a join, right? During retrieving, you, 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 during retrieving you should do a join. During writing, you shouldn't use a join. Yes, it's possible because uh, y then you would have to create a model class, but then you would have to only override one method, which is. Uh, um, I can remember it by heart, it's uh, uh, on uh, build uh, query. Um, so you would just build your query there, do your inner join, and when you're saving, it would just be ignored because it doesn't go through through this query. Uh, is, this, is ACL supported? Well, uh, you can't really support natively ACL. It doesn't support the asset table if this is what you're asking, but you can use that in uh, by specializing your uh, table class using the on before save and on before read events. Um, you can run your ACLs. Again, uh, as I said, you can take a look at Com ATS, which is using ACL. It's deeply integrated with ACL, and as you can see, it's not really a big deal. But you can support that off the box because there are so many use cases with ACLs. I mean, do you really want ACLs? Do you only want uh, view levels? Do you want a combination of both? I can't really know that. So it's not, it shouldn't be part of the framework. It should be up to you to implement that the way you want. Yeah. Uh, next question. Yes. Already some kind of release strategy in mind or something like that for uh, Release strategy. Uh, version 1.3 is going to be officially released on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday when I get back uh, in office. Uh, uh, from that point onwards, I'm, I don't have short term ideas, so uh, minor releases, I don't know when they will happen. Uh, I rely on your input as a community. If you provide uh, ideas and code, etc., then uh, we will define the release strategy. Uh, what I can tell you is that version 2.0, which is at least one year off, will include uh, some kind of, um, of, form, of form class, which can automatically read the fields on your tables and create the view templates for you. So this is, this is my long-term strategy. Yeah, you have a follow-up? Yeah. Um, do you have some idea how to solve the problem? I don't know. You developed COM to do or something like that, which relies on FOF 1.3. And then I come up with my extension, which relies on FOF 2.0. Yes. Um, is there some kind of plan how to handle those two versions in one this, this is already being handled very gracefully. Newer versions of FOF are backwards compatible. If you have a component with, uh, which relies on FOF 1.0 and I have a component which relies on FOF 1.3, then your component can run on FOF 1.3. And unless I release version 2.0, there will be no issue about migrating. Even in version 2.0, I'm going to say this is deprecated and this is a migration path, so I'm going to give you at least uh, three to four months ahead warning to fix uh, uh, your component. But I'm not going to do quantum changes. I don't like the concept of doing quantum changes or renaming stuff because we like renaming stuff or, you know, all the <laughs> bad backwards incompatibility sources that we've seen in many projects over the years. Yeah. <laughs> you have a question? Would you want to see this integrated into the core? Do I want to see that integrated into the core? Well, uh, it's
it's open source, it's TPL. As long as uh, Joomla is TPL2, it legally can't happen. If Joomla would magically go GPL version 3 or later in the future, I would have no problem seeing that integrated. But realistically, seeing the work that uh, goes on the platform right now, I see that it would be some uh, conflict of interest because the platform already is trying to create code to address the same problems which will be available in Joomla in uh, two to three years. Yeah, do you have other questions? Yes. Does the rest of you all also do edit some ads? You, you, have, you have to talk slower. <laughs> <laughs> do the rest of you all also do ads and edits? You said they can fetch the there, uh, there are no rest URLs, there are uh, JSON views. Yeah. You, c you can fetch data. And thanks to some guys' passes, uh, you can actually use the, the same uh, views to submit data and modify data. But it's not REST. Yeah. REST RESTful, you know, it, it, it has some very rigid rules. You have to use HTTP verbs. Uh, if you want to uh, create something RESTful with FOF, it's very easy. You would just have uh, to do that in your dispatcher. It would have to guess the task based on the HTTP verb. This is possible. I just didn't want to do that for some of my own reasons. Okay. Yes. SF routing? No. It's uh, not built in right now. Uh, this is something that I'm uh, considering because, uh, you see, uh, the more I'm using FOF for uh, new extensions that I'm using on my site, I see that I'm pretty much copying and pasting the same code on my router.php. So probably I can include a default uh, router implementation. But then, but then Joomla doesn't help. Because the way it's implemented right now, you have to create a router PHP, you have to create the two functions. Um, uh, it's still just a, a major problem how you can magically do that. You still can't, you have to do some manual work. So it's in the back of my mind, yes, we'll talk. Uh, other questions? Yes. Uh, other than yourself, are there already uh, other developers using the uh, Here's one. Uh, there's another one, I don't think, yeah, yeah. He's not. I see that we are like, we are really just And now, yes, there is a third one. Uh, so it's me and uh, three other guys which are unre unrelated to my company. And there's uh, also uh, another developer who's working for my company. So it's uh, all five of us right now. But, well, you see, FOF, is now being used by Akiba subscriptions, admin tools, Akiba backup, so you have two of my commercial software and one which is rapidly growing. It's also going to be used by ARS, which is the other software that I'm, uh, that I'm publicly releasing, and it's also used in every other bit uh, of component that I'm using on my own site, which includes uh, uh, my ticket system and my documentation system. So if FOF goes away, I will have to reinvent the wheel, so this is go not going to happen. FOF is going to uh, be updated all the time. Yes, Hannes? Which versions uh, of Joomla does FOF support? Which versions of Joomla are supported? Well, uh, right now, FOF supports Joomla 1.5, 2.5, and can also run on Joomla 1.7, but I'm not going to test with Joomla 1.7 anymore. Uh, the long-term uh, plan is that I'm going to support uh, the, the current long-term support release of Joomla, whichever they are. And I'm going to add experimental support for the short-term support, uh, short supported release of Joomla. Can I call them just STS and LTS? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh. Okay, so the, immediate, the plan for the immediate future is to try to support Joomla 3.0 with all of that. And if I see that supporting Joomla 3.0 makes it impossible to support Joomla 1.5, then I will drop Joomla 1.5 support. If it's not necessary, and I believe that it might not be necessary, I'm just going to keep on supporting uh, Joomla 1.5 to 5 and 3x. Uh, yes? How is FOF loaded? So when a component 
Give me a second and I will show you the code. First, we use an include once for the main include file of FOF. This is a very smart file. It automatically detects if FOF is loaded. And if it's already loaded, it will not try to load it again. This file actually doesn't load any classes. It only loads um, an autoloader. So when you're going to use FOF Dispatcher, the autoloader will go and fetch the dispatcher class, the dispatcher file from the disk as it's needed. So you can safely include that line and know that it will not bloat your memory. And I believe that uh, Joomla has started doing the same thing right now. Uh, so, uh, how much time do we have? Yeah, uh, another uh, final question. Hannes, again? Uh, so, which extensions are the the target group for FOF? Uh, right now, it's mostly components because I mostly write components, and of, <laughs> obviously, and of course, it's modules because modules. What what really happens with modules in Joomla? I mean, we're reinventing the world. We ship a module to support a component, uh, so the module just does everything the component does all over again. With FOF, you can just have a module which simply loads a view from a component using HMVC. So yes, it targets also modules. Does it make any sense to do that with plugins? What is plugins? I mean, plugins are uh, small functional uh, blocks of code which, is, which isn't really visual, it, it doesn't even follow its MVC because it's of very limited scope. So you can't really target uh, plugins. For plugins, you need another kind of uh, true framework which provides another set of uh, base classes to do real work, and this is what the Joomla framework does. So I'm not trying to replace Joomla framework. Uh, I'm not delusional that I can uh, create a, a complete framework from scratch and uh, be as popular or uh, as tested as Joomla. It obviously can't happen. So yeah, and templates is completely a different beast. So yeah, <laughs> I believe I don't even have to answer that. Okay, so thank you guys very much.